Hi, this is Rob at Piezo.com with a tip about how to make a good solder joint to a piezo transducer. Now in order to make a joint, you got to pick a piezo. We have two kinds here today. One is the easy kind, this has a silver electrode. The other is the more difficult kind that is typical of the type sold by Miday. It has a nickel electrode, which is only 1,000 angstroms thick, an angstrom being 10 to the minus 10 meters. And this has given some people trouble. And I gotta say, I'm, I've just been waiting to make this video for, for kind of a long time because I'm tired of explaining this over the phone. So let's get to it. We have some paraphernalia that's very useful for making good joints. Probably uh, beside the piezo, the next most important thing is to have some flux. Uh, this is a, the kind of flux we use. Uh, it is sold along with some sample solder in a solder kit that's on our website. I highly recommend if you're going to do a lot of this that you make, avail yourselves of that kit. It's inexpensive. Solder flux and a little cup to put a few drops in. You'll need some toothpicks to make a, a apply a very small amount of this stuff. And you will need some water to wash off the joint immediately after you make it. It also would be good to have a nice working surface. Here's my handy, handy stainless steel plate and a little piece of blue tape for holding things together. You will need a soldering iron. Before me you see a very nice digital soldering iron that was lent to me by the quartermaster at Mide. And uh, it has this kind of probe. This is about a 10 watt probe. This is all you need to make a good joint. You, you do not want a big fat soldering iron. It will ruin the joint. You also don't need a digital one, but it helps to know what the temperature is if you're trying to follow directions. And in any case, even if you don't have a digital one, you will need to be able to control the temperature of the iron somehow or other. So I'll, I'll leave that up to you. And lastly, you will need the wire. Now, you can't just solder any old kind of wire to a piezo if it's too fat. It will be, it, it's stiff, and when you pick it up afterwards or stress it in any way, the wire has a lot of leverage on that tiny joint that you're making, and it will break the joint. You lose your contact, and you have to do it all over again. This is about 32 gauge wire, and that's about right for most piezo projects. Uh, you may, in the special cases, you might need something thicker, but this is the best stuff. It's very, very flexible. You also need a tool that can do some stripping. Now you can do this with a razor blade, but it's a lot more tedious, so I'm just going to use this for demonstration purposes. And you just take off a tiny, a tiny amount of the insulation. The reason for that is when you have a nice long piece of bare wire that's multi-stranded, the melted solder wicks up in there and it makes a nice stiff rod and you have a leverage problem all over again. All right, so this is all we need. Uh, I'll remind you that you can get this kit that we sell that has the flux and it has solder. I forgot about the solder. Tiny solder. Don't use big fat stuff, but I would also recommend that you use the ROHS Rojas compliant solder that has no lead. If your prototype ends up working, then it's going to go into production and you're going to have to use this stuff anyway. So just get it and, and use it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with any of the joints it makes. It's perfect. Uh, it works just as well as the old tin lead solder does. So uh, I'm going to change the camera angle uh, so you can see what I'm doing better and go through a couple of these joints. Okay, let's make a solder joint. We'll start with the easy one. This is the silver electrode that I mentioned. It's clean, white, and 
generally will is easier to solder in fact you don't really need any uh, any flux usually uh, you can treat this a lot like you would a circuit board uh, here is one technique that works fairly well you take the soldering iron you get a little tiny bead about the size of the joint that you want to make on the tip and you tin the spot where it's going to be like that then you take this wire, which you've pre-stripped to a very short amount, and you pre-tin the wire. Just like that. And then you touch the wire to the little blob on the piezo, and that's it. It makes a nice shiny bead, and you can see it's somewhat <clears throat> like the professionals did and it's a good joint and that's a lot like a circuit board and you depending on the <clears throat> the flux that's inside the solder now when you have one of these with the nickel electrode it has to be treated entirely differently if you were to do what I did it would simply not stick that's what happens most of the time or you might find yourself scrubbing around and pretty soon the electrode is gone this piece is <clears throat> a piezo is very lightweight and it definitely needs to be held in place just a little bit with tape so it doesn't slide and in this case uh, this is the nickel electrode. It's only 1,000 angstroms thick. That's not very thick. You breathe on it, it'll go away. You take the toothpick, just wet the tip, and you put a small dot of flux right where you want the joint to be. And you take your wire. Strip that little bit off the tip, taking care not to leave very much wire exposed. Dip the wire into the flux. Now you've got flux dot where you want it to go. You've got flux in the strands of the wire. You have soldering iron. You put a bead on the soldering iron that looks just like that. It doesn't has about the same size as you want the joint. I can you can adjust that to suit. Then you lay the pie, the wire right on top of the piezo place where you want it to be. And you take that solder blob, the wet solder blob, and you push it down on the both of them. And it makes a little sound like that. It goes, tss, that's it. Don't leave it on any longer than that. You remove. Take a look at your work immediately in the water. Now, if you're in the lab, you don't use a cup of water. You can if it's on the bench. If you're near a sink, you can put a vessel like this. Put your multiple pieces in there and let water dribble into it for about 15 minutes. Get it, get it good and clean. Purpose of the water is to stop the action of the flux. It is a mild organic acid. It's water soluble. It's very safe, but it's not safe for electrodes. If you leave it on your electrode, it'll eat it away. So always, always wash your joints as, as soon as possible after making it. So there you got it. This is the whole method. So that worked out pretty well. Now you can make joints just like that right in your own laboratory. And don't forget in your exploration of piezo world, if you have any questions, get in touch with us at piezo.com.